Hello everyone, which is the most important organ in our body? Everything, obviously. Okay, but for this concept, let us give more importance to the eye. Uh, just imagine, you close your eyes and walk in this street. How does it feel for you? Yeah, it's very difficult, right? Without eye, it's very difficult to walk. Uh, for example, like uh, if other sense, uh, like uh, the taste or maybe smell or hearing, everything is now not working. If they stop working, obviously the eye, the important sense organ will protect us from the danger, correct? So that is the important uh, function of the eye. So here in this session, we are going to talk about the human eye structure and function. Okay, so we see that I could see uh, colored uh, human eye structure. This is the diagram given in your NCRT textbook. Okay, fine. I have a model also so that I can show you the model of the eye and I explain it. The, explain the different structure of the eye. Okay, so I have already written accessory structure. Before we discuss about the structure of the eye, I have to tell you what is the important accessory structures which is present within our eye. So normally like if you look into the structure of the eye, it looks like a ball, correct? So it's nothing but a ball. Okay, so this is uh, the eye model. Okay, we'll explain it later. Uh, see, the important accessory duct of, not duct actually, it's structure. Okay, so the structure is the lacrimal gland. Okay, so what is this lacrimal gland? Here you see the white part of the eye which is uh, called as the sclera which encloses a lot of uh, tiny capillaries and at the center you could see a round brown color structure uh, which encloses so many parts of the eye particularly iris which gives uh, color to the eye and at the center of the iris you could see a small hole that is called as the pupil. Okay, inside the pupil there is a tiny lens okay and it has got so many structures. Uh, but if you just you know go to the superior lateral side of the eye, uh, there is uh, eyelid. Uh, beneath the eyelid, there is a gland which is called as the tear gland or also called as lacrimal gland, which secretes the tear. Okay. So once the tear is uh, secreted, it will be collected by a duct, a pipe-like structure called as lacrimal duct. So lacrimal duct will drain that tears into the entire surface of the eyeball and uh, the eye will be kept moist at the same time it is also protect uh, the eye from the bacterial infections because it has got a wonderful enzyme called as lysozyme okay and uh, it also lubricates the eye so that you know the eyeball can move without any problems okay whereas the tear which is uh, produced in excess that will be collected at the corner of the eye and uh, the excess tear will be drained into the nasal passage that is into your nose uh, through a small uh, duct uh, that is uh, situated at the corner of the eye called as uh, the nasal lacrimal duct nasal lacrimal duct through the nasal lacrimal duct uh, the tears will drain into the nasal cavity that is into your nose so now you got it right Okay, so the second important accessory structure is the conjunctiva. Okay, we write the conjunctiva. So what is this uh, conjunctiva? Uh, remember uh, the lacrimal gland, for example, this is uh, the outermost uh, part of the eye, which is the visible portion of the eye. And uh, this is the eyelid, which is covering the eyeball. And here the lacrimal gland is there. That is what I said, like superior lateral to the eye here. So it secretes that here. Okay. So I did not write you write uh, the spelling of this the enzyme that is lysozyme and lubrication and also keeps the eye motion. That is the main function of this lacrimal gland. Okay. So conjunctiva is nothing but a transparent sheath which covers the eye that is actually the visible portion of the eye. So this portion. So for your understanding, let me just you know draw one line here. So this portion is the visible portion which contains white part and this is the portion called as the cornea. White part is called as the sclera. Okay, we'll talk about it later. And this is actually not visible. Okay. And the entire human eye is situated inside a big cavity in our skull or cranium called as the orbit. Okay, so there is orbit and inside the orbit you see a pair of eyes. Okay, so two orbits, two eyes. And uh, uh, this one. So here you see a transparent sheath. I don't want to spoil this uh, diagram. It took me around uh, 
20 minutes to draw this diagram okay so this particular structure is surrounded by a thin plastic sheath which is called as the conjunctiva okay so we take this model and uh, yeah this is the visible uh, portion of the eye and uh, this is the cornea and this is the sclera the white color structure it is also whitish uh, layer and this is the conjunctiva okay see the behind of the eye the conjunctiva is absent okay the front of the eye the visible part of the eye is surrounded that is protection actually by a thin transparent sheath which is called as conjunctiva okay so we got it right so what is this conjunctiva and uh, what is the function of this conjunctiva conjunctiva is uh, a mucous membrane that's it so it is mucous membrane uh, what is the function of this mucous membrane which produces mucus right so which keeps the eye margin and gives lubrication yes so that is also a very important function so lubrication and uh, interestingly this particular conjunctiva gives the protection to the sclera and this cornea so protection we write one more function lubrication protection it also keeps uh, the eyeball intact okay so this is the function of conjunctiva these are the two structures which belongs to accessory structure of the eye now let me just uh, erase this uh, and uh, we'll go further that is uh, the layers of eye the eye that is human eye has uh, three layers so we have three layers which makes uh, the eye actually okay so we just uh, take white chalk and we'll write layers of eye layers very simple the human eye eye has uh, three layers okay so yeah orange the first layer is actually called as the outermost layer which contains two important part outer layer which has two parts Okay, we'll write it here itself. The two parts, A, this portion, the white color structure, the whitish structure that is a visible part of the eye, you could see that, that is called as the sclera. Sclera, okay, so sclera is there. And the second part is this portion uh, orange color structure this portion actually which is attached to the sclera so you could see the junction here that is point of connection between the cornea and sclera that is the junction here okay so there is one significance here i'll talk about it later and this structure is called as the cornea okay so which makes the outer layer cornea so sclera and cornea makes the outer layer of the eye so what is exactly this sclera sclera we know that it is white in color Okay, so we, we use a different color here. It is the white part of the eye. And what you see is numerous blood vessels, correct? We will just see in your sclera, there will be tiny blood vessels, that is capillaries. You see the capillaries. Okay, so tiny capillaries will be there. Why capillaries? To provide oxygen and nutrients to the sclera itself, not to the cornea. Okay, so it provides nutrients and oxygen only to the white part of the eye what exactly the component which makes this lira okay lira is made up of dense connective tissue okay so dense connective tissue could be asked for your competitive oh, this entire session is important for a competitive i forgot to say okay so lira is made up of dense connective tissue so that's all about from lira okay so now we'll go to the second outermost layer of the eye which is called as the cornea okay so cornea so this cornea is devoid of blood capillaries there is no capillaries okay we write no capillaries and how do they get oxygen and nutrients they get oxygen as well as nutrients we write o2 plus n okay nutrients from the lymphatic vessel so there is lymph here okay so with the help of the lymph they get oxygen and nutrient so we just write lymph provides oxygen and nutrient to the cornea okay so what is the function of cornea cornea actually protects the lens okay so it protects very important structure in our eye protective in nature that is it protects 
the lens or inner part like you know you could see a small cavity here this is called as aqueous chamber and uh, here you could see colored portion of the eye which is called as the iris and this is a small opening that is uh, mainly because of the contraction and relaxation of the iris like this and you could see a big uh, tiny circle uh, big circle or tiny circle depending on the intensity of life, light and ultimately this structure okay which is a biconvex two side correct biconvex in nature this is lens so this cornea protects the lens okay so next important bulged in nature that is uh, it is bit uh, uh, pointing towards the outside okay outside of the you could see it's bit bulged here okay a bit solar like structure and another important thing of this uh, cornea is if you look into this particular structure and it is bit bulged and as a result when the light is entering into the eye particularly to the lens when the light hits the cornea it bends the lights okay so i cannot do that let us assume that this is the cornea and light is traveling like this when it hits the cornea light bends okay so like this this is very very important okay for the production of the vision okay so that is it bends light okay rays so this is actually a very important uh, function of the outermost layer of the eye i hope you got this now we'll go to the second layer that is the middle layer of the eye okay so we see the second layer that is a uh, second layer or middle layer of the eye okay so this is a uh, i forgot to label sclera and this portion is actually label it here cornea okay so this portion which is bit uh, brownish in color this one the middle layer and this is actually called as the choroid okay choroid is a uh, important uh, part of the middle layer okay we write the middle layer of the eye which mainly consists of five different parts okay in that uh, i have already labeled the choroid is one uh, we use a white color so the first one uh, let me write a that is choroid which normally consists of uh, blood vessels and it also contains uh, the melanocytes which produces uh, melanin that's what like it's bit uh, dark in color this structure the choroid okay so which also like maintains uh, the rigidity of the entire eye uh, actually even sclera also maintains the rigidity okay so the choroid also maintains uh, the rigidity and gives a proper shape to the eye choroid we'll talk about it next one the b is uh, we see here uh, this structure you see this structure right you know bit greenish in color and uh, red color structures are called as ciliary body okay that's that is the second part of the middle layer ciliary body okay we label it this structure and this structure together actually called as okay ciliary body actually ciliary body has uh, two parts okay so ciliary muscles and ciliary process we will we'll talk about it let me just leave space for it the third one is the important one is this structure which is the colored part of the eye you could see it what's your eye color green blue not white actually okay brown so or black that is actually nothing but which is given by the color of for the eye is given by this structure here it is pinkish in color you could see that that is actually called as the iris and if you look into the iris for example if this is the iris and it has got colored structure and at the center you could see a small canal correct a small uh, hole is there and normally like if you just uh, focus the light onto your eyes obviously like you know you could see uh, the thing that is uh, the hole of the iris that is called as uh, uh, i'll write here that is our next part pupil contracts it becomes very tiny actually okay the diameter decreases when obviously like uh, uh, if you go into the dark like theater obviously like uh, that iris actually relaxes and as a result you could see uh, uh, like the diameter of that pupil increases correct okay so that is pupil iris okay uh, actually there is no structure like pupil pupil is formed because of iris that is contraction and relaxation of the iris okay so next important part part of our eye is this 
lens. So these are the five parts which is present within the middle layer. Okay, so this one you could see the choroid structure. The choroid structure is mainly uh, which is colored structure which contains a lot of blood vessels. That means it provides oxygen and nutrient to this particular middle layer of the eye. Okay, so I write BV blood vessel and at the same time you could see it is bit darkish in color. The reason is uh, it has got specialized cell. I will write here. I don't have space here. So that dark colors the structure is mainly because of the pigment that is melanin produced from a spec, uh, type of cells called as melanocyte produces a uh, pigment called as melanin because of the melanin. So you could say high concentration of melanin within the choroid region. Got it? Okay. So we go to the ciliary body. This is a bit lengthy now because uh, it has got many functions. Ciliary body is again divided into two important parts that is ciliary process. Okay. So the second one is ciliary muscle. Uh, for your competitive part, you can expect uh, some question from ciliary process and ciliary muscles. Very important. Okay. What is the ciliary process? The green color structure what you see here this is ciliary process okay so this is ciliary process okay the green color one ciliary process this one the green color one you could see two ciliary process and the red color structure the red color structures are actually called as ciliary muscles actually ciliary muscles are nothing but smooth muscles okay smooth muscles okay they are smooth muscles actually okay so you know what is a smooth muscle is all about. Ciliary process actually have the ability. So for example, this is the ciliary process. Have the ability to secrete or release one liquid. Uh, liquid, And that liquid is nothing but filled here. There is a chamber here. This is the cornea. And this is the iris. You could see between the iris and cornea, there is a cavity. What do you call for this cavity? Okay, so we write here that is... aqueous chamber so we have one cavity for protection and also like it maintains the shape of the eyeball that's what actually the cornea is a bit bulged okay so this is filled with a liquid which is called as aqueous humor okay i don't want to spoil this but what do okay so this is now the liquid contain called as aqueous humor aqueous humor is the liquid present inside the aqueous chamber okay so who actually produces this aqueous humor very important question who produces it ciliary process which produces aqueous humor ciliary process okay so now this aqueous uh, humor which is now present within this aqueous chamber which is released by the ciliary process okay once it is full obviously like you know the excess will be released out okay so it has to be drained okay we cannot actually keep the same aqueous humor for a long time it has to be drained so draining can be taken place between the junctions that's what i said earlier like there is a one significant function so this is the junction between cornea and sclera correct okay so this is the junction from this junction the uh, actually the junction is nothing but kennel of Schlem. Please note this very important. Kennel of Schlem is present between the junction of Sclera and Cornea. What is the function of this kennel of Schlem? Which drains the excess aqueous humor. It drains excess aqueous humor. Please note this point. So for the aqueous chamber, who produces, contributes aqueous humor? The ciliary body. That's it simple okay we go to the next one ciliary muscles it is nothing but the smooth muscles it's nothing but smooth muscles here the red color one is nothing but smooth muscle i don't have space here so okay so uh, yeah so smooth muscles okay you could see here this lens is held together by two from the two sides of this smooth muscle from here and here you could see the lens is held very tightly okay so firmly and but between the smooth muscle and uh, the lens this is the lens now okay between that you could see white structure here right you could see this white structure and this is called as suspensory ligament very important okay so i how to write here suspensory ligament okay so between the lens and the smooth muscle that is ciliary muscles what is there 
this white color structure which is called a suspensory ligament suspensory ligaments which is attached to the lens and and suspensory ligament is the point of connection between the lens and ciliary muscles okay what is the function of this actually if you see the suspensory ligaments they are everywhere okay in this case it is a uh, the diagram okay so they are surrounded from all sides of the lens okay so they are for example if this is the lens and uh, yeah i don't have anything here so from here the suspensory ligaments are there here 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 every, everywhere it looks like a sun okay so here what you see is the ciliary muscles the main function of ciliary muscle is just to stretch or tilt the lens okay so lens is stretchable like this i got it so stretching of the lens is mainly because of the movement of the ciliary muscles or movement of the lens is because of ciliary muscles that's it okay did i say movement of the muscles movement of the lens is because of ciliary muscles okay so what is this iris iris is the colored part of the eye colored part okay part of the eye okay so this is iris what is the function of iris it regulates the amount of light that has to enter into the lens got it so when there is no light intensity of light is very low obviously like you know they move like this as a result you could see the opening called as the pupil diameter increases when there is adequate light the intensity of light is very good then obviously you could see like you know the movement of the iris towards the center as a result the canal that is the pupil diameter reduces so that is actually regulation of the light intensity got it so that is iris function what is this pupil oh uh, yeah done done okay so what is this lens lens is a uh, simple which is biconvex okay very important lens is biconvex and lens is stretchable by the ciliary muscles because they are elastic in nature correct okay another important function is like see this is the behind of the lens and this is the front side of the lens so okay so the front side of the lens is protected by or surrounded by a liquid what do you call for the liquid aqueous humor correct so this is the big chamber of the eye which maintains the shape of the eyeball and this structure let me just have to write that structure is called as vitreous chamber and uh, that is filled with a liquid called as vitreous humor vitreous chamber containing vitreous humor so lens actually separates aqueous chamber from vitreous chamber or it is surrounded by vitreous humor from behind and that is posterior and for the to the anterior of the lens you could see this structure which is nothing but filled with a liquid that is aqueous humor done so that's all about lens what is the function of lens it's very important for the movement of the light into the vitreous chamber then it helps the light to fall on this particular region this is the innermost layer of the eye okay where the vision is or image is produced called as the retina okay we'll talk about that retina let me just erase it uh, okay uh, containing retina okay so you erase it Uh, please uh, take one more point for the choroid. I forgot to say the choroid actually containing the melanocytes, obviously, right? You know, which gives a bit dark colored appearance to this choroid region. And even it provides oxygen and nutrients to the retina. You may get a question like which particular structure in the eye provides oxygen and nutrients to the retina, the innermost layer that is nothing but the choroid region, that is the first part of the middle layer. Okay, we go to the third layer that is the innermost layer. Innermost layer mainly consists of three important uh, cells. Okay, so three important cells. Uh, the first one is actually uh, called as photoreceptor cells. See the name photo means light, receptor means they receive the light. Receptor cells. There are two photoreceptor cells present in the retina so this yellow color structure is nothing but retina you could see a small depression here note that point and this is actually called as uh, the blind spot and this is called as the yellow spot blind spot yellow spot okay i'll talk about it later uh, this yellow spot is also called as fovea okay 
So photoreceptor cells are mainly containing two different types of cells, very very important for the night that is dim vision that is cotopic vision that is in the night time you could see some uh, structures okay or objects that is mainly because of a type of photoreceptor cell which is called as rods please note the vision that is scotopic the vision is scotopic what is scotopic that is twilight twilight or it is night time vision okay so it helps to see the objects in dark that is because of rods a type of photoreceptor cells i'll talk about it in detail and this one the second type of cell uh, very important for color vision and also during the daytime that is daylight vision called as the cones so we have rod cells and cone cells rods and cones okay photoreceptor cells and if you just you know see what type of uh, function they does they help in photopic vision Please remember these terms very important photopic means daylight vision so daylight vision daylight okay so daylight vision and one more thing let me just have to tell you this even they help in color vision also you could see see this diagram how many colors are there many colors are there correct okay so this is mainly because of cone cells we have three different types of cone cells we'll talk about it that is a red a green and blue cone cells okay so this is the brief introduction of uh, photoreceptor cells and uh, here you see the photoreceptor cells okay we will uh, talk about it by taking a small portion of this uh, retina so this is retina i forgot to mention retina okay so the second uh, structure or cell which is uh, present this is the outermost in the retina it is outermost here you see the rods and cones here okay so the middle one that is next to the photoreceptor cells uh, that is containing bipolar neurons you remember this term right bipolar neurons neuron cells bipolar what is bipolar very simple it has got only one dendrite and a cell body and one axon so this is synaptic region synaptic knob actually so this is bipolar neuron will be there next to photoreceptor cell next one the last one is the ganglion cells so ganglion cells are nothing but a, a type of neural cells itself they relay the impulses that is nothing but produced in the photoreceptor cell then it's uh, uh, transmitted to bipolar neuron and they then the action potential is collected by the ganglion cells and then this is optic nerve then they relay that particular transmit that particular impulse that is nothing but vision to the cortex region the visual cortex region of our brain okay we talk about it let me just erase it and talk about the photoreceptor cells in detail now we will uh, talk about uh, the detailed structure of uh, two types of photoreceptor cell because this uh, particular uh, concept is very very important for your uh, competitive examination okay so we just uh, draw the first type of cell which is called as rods what is the function of rods they are helpful in scotopic vision that is dim light vision night vision okay so scotopic or it is also called as twilight vision remember it okay so now if you just you know look into the diagram of uh, this particular rod i'll uh, draw here hope you can see this so rod look like a rod shaped cell okay hence the name rods and uh, yeah you could see cone like structure here in the cell itself and now so this portion is uh, containing nucleus of the cell because it's a cell okay and ultimately this is the synaptic uh, region transmission of impulse takes place here okay synaptic region of the rod cell and this is the nucleus of the rod cell and here you see so many mitochondria to provide atp okay mitochondria will be there and this is mitochondria and uh, let me just tell you that rods particularly one cell of the rod is divided into two regions so this is the outer region okay and this region is the inner region okay two types Uh, two parts are there in one one particular cell see outer region mainly consists of uh, 
very important protein okay so it contains protein i have to tell you that rods are also called as visual purple the other name for rod is visual purple they have a protein here in the outer region of the rod cell the protein name is scotopsin scotopsin scotopic say the names scotopsin is the protein which is present in the outer region of the rod okay and along with this scotopsin there is scotopsin actually there is one more tiny uh, structure that is nothing but vitamin e derivative which is called as rhodopsin okay so rhodopsin so there are two structures which is present within the outer surface or outer region of the rods called as scotopsin a protein and vitamin a derivative chemical called as rhodopsin okay rhodopsin and scotopsin play an important role in the transmission of the impulse that is nothing but the light okay and convert it into action potential and then actually it travels throughout that is inner part of the rods and ultimately reaches the synaptic region which will be collected by the next cells what you call that bipolar neuron okay so if you just uh, uh, note now uh, this point for example this is a rod or cone doesn't matter photoreceptor cell and the this is outer that is outer retinal portion and this one the red color one are the bipolar neuron and uh, the green color structures are nothing but another type of cells called as ganglion cells okay so this is photoreceptor cell bipolar neurons and ganglion cells this is the order outside to inside or inside to outside anything could be asked for your competitive okay so it could be given in a jumbled fashion and you have to arrange it properly from outside that is from this portion outside the retina outside outside layer of the retina we have photoreceptor cell the middle is always by polar neuron and the innermost layer of the retina containing ganglion cells this is the order okay so this is rods that is helps in scotopic twilight vision that is in the night okay so remember these things scotopsin and vitamin a derivative rhodopsin is present if i just you know draw it's also called as visual purple okay so if i just uh, uh, draw one more uh, diagram of cone okay so cone cells how exactly cone cells look uh, there are three different types of cone cells the first one is blue cone cell as i said earlier that you know cone cells help in color vision so there are three types cone cells blue cone cells okay next one uh, that is uh, green cone cells okay one more is there that is red cone cells okay so these three different types of cone cells are specific to a particular color the blue cone cells are responsible for receiving only blue color the green cone cells are responsible for receiving only green color whereas red cone cells are responsible for only receiving red color okay they are very specific but when all the blue green and red receive that specific color and ultimately a combination of new light is produced okay when all get excited when they when all receive all the different lights obviously they get excited to produce white light this could be asked how white light is produced very simple when all blue green and red cone cells get excited because they receive specific uh, color and obviously they produce white light white light sensation is felt by the human being okay so this cones also called as visual violet okay so they are help in photopic photopic vision photopic vision okay they help in color vision okay so now let me just you know draw the diagram please note on this all this point okay so let me draw the diagram so the diagram looks like this this is cone like structure right okay which contains a pigment like rhodopsin rhodopsin is a pigment i forgot okay along with the protein that is scotopsin rhodopsin is present what is rhodopsin it is vitamin a derivative present only in rods whereas here there is one more pigment that is called as iodopsin so iodopsin is the pigment present in only cones note this point very important and now you could see the structure which goes like this
so this is uh, the outer region and this is the inner region of the cone okay inner part of the cone and uh, here you see lot of mitochondria mitochondria will be seen and this is the nucleus and this is the mitochondria okay so this is iodopsin it looks like cone hence the name cones got it so this is actually all about cones cones help in the color vision or photopic vision they help in daylight vision so these are all the things like functions of cones please note this uh, diagram draw this diagram rods and cones both are important and protein present in rods and cone is also very important okay so common last question okay so hope you understood this let me erase it and go further now we'll uh, speak about uh, a very important uh, two Im structures a uh, very important structures okay so that is the innermost uh, layer of uh, the retina uh, you got it right i know this portion is actually containing the photoreceptor cells this is the outermost portion of the retina okay this is the middle portion which contains a bipolar neuron and this one the inner layer inner layer okay so this is the innermost layer of the retina which is containing specialized cells called as ganglion cells okay so anyhow i'm not going to talk about the bipolar neuron they just transmit the impulse action potential or nerve impulse from photoreceptor cells either rods or cones they collect it and then they transmit it to the innermost layer of the cell which is connected to the optic nerve so this is the optic nerve got it which is connected to the visual cortex of the brain and uh, we'll uh, talk about the third layer because here you see two important structures that is the ganglion ganglion cells okay so here the ganglion cells are actually connected or opens into the optic nerve you know what is optic nerve optic nerve is a type of cranial nerve optic nerve okay so here interesting thing is in the ganglion cells that is the innermost layer of the retina here you could see a small depression right the white color one now it is orange now a depression is seen okay so that depression is called as fovea so depression in the innermost layer that is ganglion cells of the retina is called as the fovea so what is this fovea is also called as that is yellow spot so don't get confused with the yellow spot and fovea both are same so this is the yellow spot yellow spot or fovea okay a depression in the innermost layer what is the speciality of this here you don't see rods rod cells are completely absent please remember this is the only region in the eye where rod cells are completely absent but you see more high concentration of cone cells so very high concentration of cone cells will be seen and you can imagine now the color vision is very high here correct so helps in more color vision high color vision got it so they are highly sensitive to color in this particular region that is fovea so you need to remember what is fovea what is yellow spot they are same there are no rods at all no rod cells at all you see only a type of photoreceptor cell that is called as the cone is present here the cones are present here as a result uh, there are three different cones as i said earlier green blue and uh, red color and these three cones when they respond to the three colors at the same time simultaneously you see the white color so white color will be seen and depending on green and blue for example green color cone and the blue cone actually you know, respond to that particular light and a different color will be produced that's what you will see different colors got it so combination will be produced actually when they respond to a specific color so combinations will be there like green blue or blue green or uh, let us say red blue blue red I like that combination when three all three cones respond to all these colors obviously white light sensation will be produced in our eyes okay we can see the white color that is sunlight for example okay so hope you got this fovea or yellow spot the next one here we could see all three layers of the retina that is photoreceptor and uh, the innermost layer ganglion and the middle layer this is the middle layer okay of the retina which is called as bipolar neuron so all these things are completely absent in this particular spot correct you don't see any retina here you so don't see any retinal layer there correct so this spot is actually called as blind spot a very very important you get question from fovea or blind spot concept okay what is this blind spot 
here no retina so you don't see any retinal cells any retinal cells means three different retinal cells you don't see them it's completely absent okay so absent and as a result no vision is produced or formed so there is no vision here it's completely blind blind spot got it so vision cannot be formed here because there are no retinal cells that's it three retinal cells are completely absent why because these retinal cells are actually moving inside of the eye to form a big nerve fiber which runs towards your brain which is called as optic nerve so this is optic nerve and ultimately the innermost cell that is ganglion cell which forms the optic nerve that's what i have written here got it which finally connects the optic nerve so this is all about uh, the human eye structure let us just you now take the model and uh, let me just uh, tell you or recall or summarize this entire uh, structure of the human eye okay so this one is actually the sclera okay and where you could see the blood vessels sclera and blood vessels are connected and we know that this structure is actually kind of like a bit protruded that is projecting outside of the eye a glass structure transparent structure okay called as cornea okay cornea doesn't have any blood vessels but lymph is there to provide oxygen and nutrient to the cornea so the function is protection okay and also maintains the shape of the eyeball okay if i just open this structure okay so this is what the cornea is cornea okay and uh, even i showed you earlier that uh, the sclera and the cornea is protected by one more transparent sheath plastic like sheath transparent one that is called as the conjunctiva correct okay so fine so here let us take this this is the sclera and this portion okay so fine not required okay so this portion which is quite dark containing melanocytes this is the middle layer of the eye and uh, this one is called as the choroid region containing melanocytes producing melanin so melanin is here okay and this portion the white white color portion is nothing but uh, the ciliary body which contains two important structures one is ciliary process ciliary process will be there which produces a liquid uh, which is called as aqueous humor that will be okay so for example if i take this and keep here and you could see a distance between this uh, iris and uh, this cornea here there is a chamber called as aqueous chamber where it is filled with a liquid called as aqueous humor who secretes aqueous humor this structure the ciliary process okay so ciliary process and just below the ciliary process you see ciliary muscles okay ciliary muscles will be a type or there and it is a type of uh, smooth muscles which is uh, connecting to the lens you cannot see the lens here okay it is connecting to the lens uh, through a ligament called a suspensory ligament very important so connection between lens and uh, the smooth muscle ciliary muscle is nothing but suspensory ligament okay so this is iris so they contract and relax depending on the intensity of the light and as a result you could see a hole here this hole is called as the pupil so iris is the colored part of the eye remember this okay so this is what you see if i just open okay i have to tell you that this is the optic nerve okay so optic nerve and i have a bit careful now okay so this is uh, the inner side and now let me just uh, throw it out and uh, you see the lens here correct see iris pupil now the pupil and just you know behind the pupil you see this structure which is elastic in nature which is contractible at the same time relaxable also so this is actually called as the lens very important okay so lens and uh, now this uh, is the cavity for the lens okay so and this structure is nothing but the last innermost layer of the eye which is nothing but called as the retina retina this one this structure is actually the outermost layer of the retina containing photoreceptor cells which mainly contains two cells rods and cones rods is for scotopic vision whereas cones are for the photopic vision that is a uh, daylight vision color vision got it okay rods mainly contains uh, proteins like uh, scotopsin and also like it contains uh, rhodopsin also a uh, pigment okay rhodopsin mainly contains two important component one is retinal 
and which is a, a component of or derivative of vitamin A. And one more protein is there that is opsin, that is cotopsin. Okay, so these are the things we'll see, see inside of the rod. Whereas cone is cone shaped uh, cell which contains iodopsin, correct, a protein pigment which is present inside that. Okay, and uh, now the middle layer of the retina is uh, nothing but containing bipolar neuron. What is bipolar neuron? one dendrite and one axon that is bipolar and inside that is the innermost layer i cannot open this i guess yeah no i cannot open it it's fixed innermost one is actually called as the ganglion cells what is ganglion cells they open into this optic nerve finally they will open into the optic nerve and in that uh, innermost layer of the retina you see two important structure one is fovea it is also called as yellow spot where you don't see any rods only you see cones yes only cones are there and obviously photopic vision is very high color vision is very high whereas uh, here there are no cones no rods ultimately the vision cannot be formed here and this spot is called as the blind spot okay, in cones you see three different types of cones green cones blue cones and red cones and when they respond to a light simultaneously white light will be produced and depending on the combination of responses or uh, different types of colors will be produced okay so ultimately this optic nerve which is connected to the visual cortex region of the brain and uh, based on the memory okay you just recall that particular object and tell the name okay so that is camera so i know the camera if i i uh, for example like uh, if uh, i am a very young uh, boy or maybe like a uh, a tiny boy like one year old boy and obviously like you know i don't know what is the object is so i don't know okay but if anybody teach me this is camera tell me that this is exactly this object camera and obviously like you know the memory will be stored and whenever i see that thing i say camera so this is the thing all right okay so this is all about the structure of human eye and i hope that you understood the entire concept and now we have to talk about the mechanism of vision okay so let me erase everything i think no need of labeling i hope you have taken down everything very very important the entire session is everything i told i explained everything for your competitive part okay so make your notes and study very well